Jesus, that man's a fucking lunatic. Hello everyone and welcome back. Henry discovered the location of the bandit camp of previous Sabbaths, and now he's off to discover his capabilities in preparation for the upcoming battle. Having a few Nighthawk potions handy is very useful in this endeavour. There are three main ways to approach the camp. One is the main road, coming up from what used to be Scallets. The second one is following Timmy's instruction and going northwards from Tamburg. And the third is following the creek that flows into Robna. All three approaches are guarded, but there's points where you can cross the creek surrounding the perimeter. There's also the option of approaching from the forest to the north. If you're coming up from the road from Scallets, you can simply hop off the road in the vicinity of the wagon and follow the perimeter of the encampment through the forest. One of the things you come across if you go that way is the church steeple tower. It's a good high position that grants visibility across much of the forest. They can see a long way from that steeple. And those archers up there, definitely going to be a problem. It makes for a very pretty start in the evening, but it can also house a lot of archers. The second thing that meets the eye is the stockade that the bandits have built to plug in the gaps in the perimeter. A stockade? A handful of men could hold it for quite a while. The two small bridges crossing the creek around the perimeter provide ready access into the encampment, but they are well guarded. A bridge? That'll make it easier to cross the earthworks. There's open ground on both sides of it, but it's the fastest route for an attack. There's a small clear path that cuts across the forest starting from the creek to the south. It joins up with the main road coming up from Scallets, but the junction is well guarded. We could launch a sneak attack from here. Once you do come into the encampment itself, there's a large clear area, surrounded on two sides by two encampments, one for the Kumans and one for the bandits. Good ground for a big fight, but not much cover. To the north side of the clearing, there's also ladders being stashed up against the wall. Patrols were set off from each camp on occasion towards the perimeter. The main entrances to each camp are well guarded. Bugger off! But if you skirt around the Kuman camp, you'll come across an unguarded entrance on the northern side. Inside that entrance, you'll come across a chest containing some Kuman gear that you can use to disguise yourself. There's also a bottle of poison in case you didn't bring any, and you can use that to poison the various food pots around. If you need more poison, you can find them in various chests around the encampments. The Kuman disguise you found in that chest is very useful for getting into the camps themselves. <sighs> But it's important you don't give Kumans a chance to speak to you because that will blow you cover. So while you can only spend a little time in the Kuman camp, a disguise allows you free reign into the bandit camp. I'd like to open a cobbler's shop in Kutzenberg or Prague. So you're a cobbler? Particularly after the execution of the bandit who started a fight with the Kumans. It gives you an excellent opportunity to gather intelligence from listening to the bandit's conversations. Many of them are about just general conversation, but there's a number of them that speak about Runt, the person who took your sword and about a mysterious boss who's even above Runt. Stories about live here. Took it for some dead fellow in Skelets. Not like he was gonna need it. It's a fucking shame I didn't make it there in time. I heard there was some fucking great loot. You wouldn't believe it! Sigismund's soldiers just torched the place and left. The whole village was there for the Rivers of <laughs> well, blood and a bloody to to flood! I wanna get my hands on some plunder too. <laughs> Neuhof was a bloodbath, I'll tell you. Dead women, horses on fire. Yeah. Like when the priest talks about the end of the world. Well, I'm sort of glad I wasn't there. Don't reckon I'd sleep well after that. It was brutal, even for the old hands. I had to get drunk as a fiddler to fall asleep that night. Bloody Hungarians. It's bad enough they take any yokel they find on some dung heap. But now these human dog eaters too. What's your problem with them? Each of them's worth two of ours in a fight. And that's saying something. I, got a I don't like that you never know what they're saying or thinking. And the way they walk around with their noses in the air. I bet they're double crosses the first chance they get. I'm telling you, one of them What's fucking that, Hungarians I? bumps into me again, and I'm gonna knock him out right there. Hope I'm there to back you up when it happens. Fucking Fuck her off. And learn some respect. I'll drink no more today. Better to do? Did you hear? Yesterday, Run no killed a man just for spilling wine on him at dinner. Jesus. That man's a fucking lunatic. I've heard stories about him would turn your blood cold. Do you know anything about our commander? You mean the sharp one? The one even Runt is afraid of. Didn't hear nothing about him. No one did. Stop. 
Well, I heard all kinds of stuff, none of it too pleasant. They say he's even meaner than our old bastard. That shouldn't be possible. Camp life. Better not talk about him. You never know who might be listening. Who are you talking about? Run ain't no midget. And don't talk about him like that. You know he could kill you for it. Nah, I'm talking about the other one. The one they call Istvan. He's above runt even. I hear he's planning something big. That there's more camps like this one. You ever seen him? Are you mad? Where would I see him? He's not going to deal with scum like us. That's what he's got one for. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do with that intelligence, but it does foreshadow events in the future, and it serves as great world building. Scouting the camps is all good and well, and the information will certainly come in useful, but you also want to make sure that you weaken the bandits as much as possible before the upcoming battle. That translates into two things. Poisoning food and destroying arrows. There's four of each, and unfortunately doing things like putting witches potion into the food doesn't seem to have any entertaining effects on the people who eat the food. With a little bit of patience it's possible to do the two food pots and two arrow stocks in the Kuman camp quite stealthily. Well you won't be shooting these arrows. The secret is in the spices. The fewer arrows you have, the better for us. But the bandit camp is a different uh, proposition altogether. Well, you, won't be shooting these arrows. Hello! you can do one pot without getting caught, but the other food pot and the two arrow statues seem impossible to do without getting caught. So if your goal is to destroy all the food and all the arrows in both camps, then the only solution seems to be to run around like a maniac while being chased by everyone. It's definitely not the most realistic or the most role-playing approach. If there's anybody out there who knows how to do the bandit camp stealthily, please let me know how. I'm back from scouting, sir. Once you've done all you can, then you can go back to Soratic to report your findings. The information that you can share is determined by how much scouting you did. What about archers? There's a few of them and they're positioned well. If we charge them head on, they'll probably do us a lot of damage. They're up to something in the middle of the camp. It looked like they were making several long ladders. Ladders? That sounds like they're planning a siege. I like this less and less. And how many of them are there? Bear in mind I'm relying on what you say. And the most important decision is to tell him about how many enemies are to be found. Every man that comes with us will be lacking somewhere else. And I don't want bandits pillaging some other town because there's no one left to mount a defense. If you take too few, then you run the risk of being overwhelmed. If you poison all the food and destroy all the arrows, then it does help in this case. But if you make things easier by taking too many, that runs the risk of leaving the rest of the promise vulnerable. So Radzik sent me with an important message. The next step is to request reinforcements from Sodibish. He needs more men? What's going on? And then onto the battlefield. We'll approach from the south and storm them over the bridge. Form up. Forward march. The battle itself is chaotic, because Henry wouldn't have ever seen anything like this. And there are certainly things to keep in mind. But it is doable with a little bit of patience. The most important thing is to avoid engaging enemies one on one. To the bridge, quickly! Get oh. to the other side as many of you as possible! Go, and hold go, your position go. there! Particularly if you follow House Rules limiting Henry's that. skills like we have. At this point, Henry's still a peasant and he wouldn't be very well armored. Not another step! <sighs> hold your ground! Defend! The focus should be on engaging enemies that are already engaged and taking them out as quickly as possible. Reducing enemy numbers as soon as possible is the key to winning combat. Every single one of your soldiers that you free up doubles the advantage to your side. Focusing on that should very quickly turn in the battle to your advantage. Kill them! The second thing you can do is take potions. There's two opportunities to do that. One is before crossing the first bridge, and the second one is once you're done with the Kuman encampment. If it's an emergency like bleeding, then you can run down to the bridge and then that will take you out of combat. And make sure to watch out for archers, they're the most dangerous enemy in this battle. Surprise is on our side! Charge them! Let's go! Let's go! Oh! <laughs> 
But then again, maybe you've had some practice. I hope so, because last time was too easy. The final sequence of the battle is the duel with Runt. If you're playing on normal, then his head will be uncovered, and that should be the number one target for you. But if you're playing on hardcore, then you'll have a helmet on, and it won't be as easy as that. One feature that you can use to your advantage is the column to the rear. If you position yourself so that it's to your left, then it should interfere with his swings, without interfering too much with yours. Oh dear. Did that hurt? Due to the house rules that we've been using, Henry's combat skills are around 5 or 6 at most. On the other hand, his life as a traveling merchant means that he has a very high stamina relatively speaking. This can be turned to advantage by putting Runt in a position where he must block. And if he can chain those, then that will deplete his stamina and he'll be unable to block anymore. Runt is a skill advantage, so that means more likelihood of monster strikes, as well as normal blocks and counters. Take that! But if Henry gets a few strikes in, then that will very quickly deplete Runt's stamina. At this point, my Henry has a modified vitality of 16. Way off. And that will be well above what Runt has. But if you want to sell Runt's extract from the mill, and then follow the main story all the way here, then this will be a much more difficult fight. Once the battle is completed, then you have a chance to see the consequences of your choices. If you chose the option to take every soldier, then Cobb and Farm was burnt. 
That's where you find Timmy, and presumably that's where he stays. So presumably he would have been one of the victims. So even if he chose to spare him, he might have all been for nothing. If you found this useful, feel free to leave a like, and subscribe to be notified when new videos are published.